today we shall discuss about uh, losses in an induction uh, motor so losses can be divided into uh, two parts one is constant losses and another is variable losses so constant losses further can be divided into uh, iron or core losses and then mechanical losses so and then core loss can be divided into two parts one is hysteresis loss and then eddy current loss so mechanical losses consists of two one is friction losses and windage losses okay so this hysteresis loss can be minimized by using high grade silicon steel by using high grade silicon steel you can minimize hysteresis loss in the machine and then by making the core in the lamination uh, no uh, you can reduce the eddy current uh, losses okay so therefore i and another thing is core loss is depends on the frequency depends on the frequency so therefore uh, stator frequency is always equal to uh, supply frequency therefore stator core loss is dominant so then rotor frequency is less under running condition therefore rotor core loss can be neglected rotor core loss can be neglected because under running conditions uh, frequency is less so due to that no rotor uh, no core loss can be neglected but you cannot neglect stator core loss because stator it has supply frequency is equal to supply frequency due to that frequency is more stator core loss also more is there but only thing is you can neglect the rotor core losses and then variable loss uh, variable loss is uh, consists of copper losses in the stator winding and then copper losses in the rotor winding because it depends on the load condition uh, current in the stator is changing current in the rotor is also changing and then therefore copper loss is uh, is a variable phenomena this variable phenomena depending upon the load condition no copper loss is uh, changing inside the induction motor how the your how you are putting the load according to that the current drawn suck from the uh, no uh, supply is changes and then stator current changes and rotor current is also changing so due to that no we uh, no no uh, 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 losses is taking place stator winding losses and then uh, rotor winding losses okay so therefore copper losses occurring in stator winding and rotor winding so and then total st stator loss is nothing but uh, stator core loss plus stator copper losses in the stator side if you come to the rotor side you uh, know rotor rotor copper loss plus rotor core loss but rotor core loss we are neglecting because under running condition no frequency is less in the rotor side so due to that no uh, core loss is less rotor uh, uh, due to that what happens mean uh, you are neglecting the rotor uh, iron uh, rotor uh, iron loss or core loss is one and the same core loss you can call it as core loss or iron loss you can be neglected in the uh, rotor side because under running condition frequency is less in the rate rotor side so due to that rotor core loss is also less so therefore you can neglect okay so next we shall see another concept uh, that is efficiency in an induction motor you know efficiency is fully depends on the losses we shall see now uh, the concept now uh, efficiency of an induction in an induction motor you know it uh, uh, induction motor consists of stator this is the stator portion and then rotor this is the rotor portion separated by an air gap this is the air gap okay and then you uh, know uh, rotor side shaft and bearing is there through uh, shaft we are connected to the load this is the load you know we have to tie the load this one we are connecting through shaft and bearings okay and then uh, this is the support for the induction motor support for the induction uh, motor and then this is the input to the machine 
input to the machine three phase uh, ac supply we are giving and then here no stator is nothing but stator winding is there and then in the rotor also rotor winding is there so whenever you are giving the supply what happened means you already know that rotating magnetic field will be created so due to that rotating magnetic field will cut the rotor conductor when it cuts the rotor conductor an emf will be induced in the rotor conductor so due to that emf no uh, current will be flowing in the rotor uh, uh, winding so therefore rotor conductors so due to that what happen current is flowing under a magnetic field means so force will be created so due to that force uh, motor start rotation and slip is existing between stator and rotor that slip is given by n, 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 ns minus nr by ns okay so that you know uh, slip is always changing uh, depending upon the load condition because when you put the load rotor speed is decreases and slip is also uh, changing phenomena with respect to the loading condition so now whenever you are giving the ac supply you no know, stator losses will be takes place because input you are giving stator winding is there stator loss consists i already told you stator iron stator core loss plus stator copper loss will be uh, takes place and then no, this is the uh, uh, output is p2 uh, output from the stator power output is p2 i will call it as p2 stator output or rotor input is p2 okay and then uh, no rotor winding is there current is flowing so due to that rotor copper losses will be occurring that i will call it as represented by pc pc is the rotor copper loss rotor iron loss uh, rotor core loss is neglected because under running condition whenever the motor is under running condition frequency is less so due to that rotor core loss is neglected okay and then so p2 minus pc will give mechanical power developed cross mechanical power developed i will call it as pm so the gross mechanical power developed uh, no whatever the power developed minus of friction and windage losses if you do it then you get a shaft power at the load this is the useful power at the load side okay so therefore what we can evident efficiency of an induction motor is nothing but output this is the useful power divided by input this is the input power output by input will give the efficiency in the you know, various you know, uh, stages losses will be occurring one is stator loss is occurring and then rotor copper losses is occurring and then friction and windage losses is occurring and then ultimately we are getting the uh, uh, useful power at the load side that useful power you are utilizing to uh, drive the uh, load to drive the any type of load here so therefore efficiency is nothing but output by input okay so rotor efficiency how to find out means output output is what in the rotor side that is the mechanical power developed pm input is what p2 pm by p2 if you do it you get a rotor efficiency rotor efficiency pm is nothing but p2 rotor input minus rotor copper loss this is the no, p2 is the rotor input minus rotor copper losses will give the mechanical power developed mechanical power developed so this is the pm pm by p2 if you do it then you get a uh, rotor efficiency rotor efficiency so now we shall see the uh, through the power flow diagram we shall analyze uh, what is happening inside the uh, induction motor so that i already told you this is the stator portion and this is the rotor portion and then uh, stator and rotor separated by an air gap this is the input to the machine uh, that is root 3 vlir uh, caused by whenever you are giving the input to the stator what happen no stator uh, losses will be occurring and then stator uh, then you are getting the stator output here is nothing but uh, input to the rotor and then no uh, rotor copper losses will be takes place that i will call it as pc and then p2 minus pc will give uh, gross mechanical power developed uh, here this is the gross mechanical power developed and then uh, uh, mechanical losses will be developed that mechanical losses means friction and windage losses will be 
developed PM minus mechanical losses will give the output power at the load side. So this is the output power at the load side. So therefore here you know, in the stator, stator losses will be occurring in the rotor, rotor copper losses is occurring. We are neglecting the rotor core loss is neglecting because under running condition frequency is less. So due to that rotor copper, rotor uh, core loss is neglecting. We are considering only rotor copper losses. So therefore we know that the equation p is equal to omega t from that if you apply you can get the torque developed in the air you can find out and then torque developed here at the load side you can uh, find out because we know that uh, formula p is equal to omega t from that if you correlate power and speed you can easily find out the torque at the load torque at the uh, output of the cross torque developed in the rotor you can uh, find out so now we shall see how the relation no how the uh, no uh, copper loss is changing with respect to the slip we shall analyze how the gross mechanical power developed is changing with respect to slip now slip is the main phenomena we will decide the rotor copper losses and mechanical power developed and then efficiency of the uh, machine so that we shall see through mathematical uh, equation how it is uh, changing you know rotor copper losses with respect to slip and then gross mechanical power developed and then we shall obtain the equation p2 and then pc and pm how is uh, changing with respect to slip we shall analyze through mathematical equations so now here we know that gross relationship between, now uh, already told you we shall obtain the relationship between p2 and then rotor input PC, rotor copper losses and gross mechanical power developed. Okay, so now uh, we know that fundamentally P is equal to omega T. P is equal to omega T, where P is the power, omega is the angular speed, T is the torque developed. So T is nothing but gross torque developed in the by the motor. Okay, so therefore input power P2 is nothing but I want to find out input to rotor or stator output is nothing but omega s into t. I am considering omega s is the uh, state angular speed of the stator because uh, that is uh, nothing but 2 pi n s by 60. Here I have to consider n s you have to consider uh, because rotor input depends on the uh, rotor output depends on the uh, that is stator uh, speed. Uh, that's why I am considering here 2 pi n s by 60. So this is the thing. And then PM, PM is nothing but, uh, uh, no, uh, mechanical power developed is nothing but omega into T. There omega, I have to consider rotor speed. That is 2 pi n by 60. Then copper losses is nothing but input to uh, rotor minus mechanical power. If you do it, then you get a, then you get a, uh, copper losses okay so then copper losses and uh, pc by p2 if you do uh, do it the ratio you will get one mathematical relation pc is nothing but p2 minus pm p2 you know that the equation already pm you know that equation if you substitute and rearrange we get this equation that is p2 is nothing but t in pc is nothing but t into 2 pi by 60 ns minus n Okay, and then P2 is nothing but 2, uh, 2 pi ns by 60 into t. Okay, so that is what I am analyzing PC. PC is nothing but P2 minus PM. Okay, P2 you know that equation. PM you know that equation. You subtract it, you get PC. PT you already know that 2 pi ns by 60. You get the relationship. It will, it will get torque, torque get cancelled, 2 pi by 60 get cancelled. Remaining with ns minus n by ns. Uh, that is PC by P2. So therefore, PC by PT is equal to NS minus N by NS is nothing but slip. So therefore, PC is nothing but S into PT. You see the wonderful equation here. That is, copper losses is always changing with respect to the slip. No, uh, with respect to the slip is changing. Means copper loss is also uh, changing. Copper loss is also uh, changing. Okay. So now you shall see another. No concept. Here 
uh, rotor copper loss is uh, tips that, that means what we can evident rotor copper loss is slip times the rotor input so mechanical power developed is nothing but rotor input minus rotor copper loss so rotor input is p2 rotor copper loss is s into p2 so therefore if you uh, now rearrange it what we get it 1 minus s into p2 is equal to pm so the the relationship can be expressed in the ratio for a mass p2 pc by pm p2 is nothing but i will consider here p2 pc is nothing but copper loss s into p2 pm is nothing but 1 minus s into p2 or p2 is common so therefore what we get it 1 uh, ratio s yes, ratio of 1 minus s the ratio if you consider pc copper loss divided by p2 means copper loss is s yes, p uh, that is pm is pc by pm i will take consider this ratio pc by pm pc is what s yes. pm is no, nothing but uh, what 1 minus s so what is the relationship you get pc by pm that is nothing but what s over 1 minus s next i will consider the ratio p2 by pc p2 is what 1 pc is nothing but what yes so then i get a relationship is this so therefore uh, this, this slip is the main phenomena will decide the copper loss and uh, mechanical losses and the ratio we can uh, obtain so this relationship is important uh, to solve the um, problem in, in the power flow uh, diagram so there next we shall find out the torque developed in the shaft power so we know that fundamentally uh, the equation p is nothing but what omega t so t shaft i want t shaft means p naught by omega p naught is the output power uh, output power so omega is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 n is nothing but rotors uh, whatever the uh, no, uh, speed is given by in the name plate that speed you have to consider from this equation no, uh, you can easily obtain the uh, no, how much torque developed uh, at the uh, at the shaft this is the shaft and similarly you can obtain the cross torque tg is nothing but pmi omega mechanical power developed at the rotor the mechanical power developed at the rotor omega is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 and then if you apply this formula you can find out the cross torque developed at the rotor and shaft power developed at the um, shaft so therefore you can easily uh, obtain the various stages how the power flow is occurring so how the power flow is occurring you can you know you see uh, this is the uh, input power this is the output power uh, output by input will get a efficiency and then torque also you can get it t sap t sap is nothing but p output by uh, 2 pn by 60 if you do it then you get a, a torque developed at the load side similarly Torque developed at the you know, rotor, uh, uh, you can obtain by P by PM by uh, 2 pi n 2 pi n by 60. If you apply, then you can easily find out the torque developed. So therefore, so from this, what we can evident that how the power flow inside the induction motor we can easily um, analyze. So input power we are giving. So input power is converted into mechanical power here uh, the mechanical power input electrical power is converted into electrical power that the input electrical power is converted into mechanical power that mechanical power we are utilizing for many purpose in the practical field and also the losses is occurring various losses in between the stages one is stator losses and then rotor copper losses and mechanical losses ultimately we get a no, uh, no uh, power at the shaft. Uh, this is uh, P output. That is the useful power to do any useful work. Uh, due to that, torque will be developed. That is the T shaft power. Uh, that you can obtain from the formula P is equal to omega T. That is the common concept. If you apply that, there you can get torque at this shaft. You can get the torque. Here, torque how much developed you can get the torque. That is torque developed at the rotor torque developed at the shaft this is the useful power to do any useful work uh, this is a wonderful uh, machine so you see how the you know electrical power is converted into uh, mechanical power and then various stages losses is occurring we are visualizing through mathematical equation 
through mathematical equation. Step is the main uh, concept. Will decide the uh, rotor copper losses. Will decide the no, mechanical power developed in the. I mean, the gross mechanical power developed in the uh, rotor. So, uh, thank you.